the crosscut saw. It's emblematic of woodworking. And it's both intimidating for children and a very exciting tool for them to learn to use. And when they become masters of it, it is an empowering experience. In this video, first I will show you the characteristics that you need to look for in getting a saw that a child can use easily. Then I will show you how to use it. I'll show you the techniques that I teach children to use so that they can become masters of the crosscut saw. While this Sandvik cabinet maker saw is not easily available, it is a great example of a saw that children can use easily. And I know that from experience because it's the saw that I teach my students to use. There are four reasons why it's such a great saw. One is the handle is fairly small. It's designed for adults to use, but a child can hold on to it easily. Second, it has 11 teeth per inch. That's a fairly fine blade. Most saws you find in the hardware store are like eight teeth per inch. And that makes the sawing really hard because each tooth has to grab more wood. The third reason it's such a great saw is that it's only 20 inches long. Longer than that, it becomes really unmanageable, especially for shorter children. So 20 inches, maybe a little bit less, that's about an ideal length. And the fourth reason is that this saw is really thick and stiff. When a saw bends, it becomes almost impossible to use. This saw is difficult to bend because the steel is so stiff. So to review, we're looking for saws that have a fairly small handle, easy for a child to hold on to, have about 11 teeth per inch, are about 20 inches long or shorter, and are fairly stiff. While this saw isn't available easily, like I said, there are other saws on the market that I've tested out that work really well with kids. Let me show you a few. This Stanley Sharp Tooth meets all four of our criteria. The handle is easy to hold onto for a child. It's not too large. It has 11 teeth per inch. It's 15 inches long, which is great for smaller children. And the blade is very stiff. So for a new saw that's reasonably priced, I think this one cost about $15, this would be my first choice. The fine finish cut saw by Craftsman is another reasonable choice for use by children. Um, there are some drawbacks. The handle is a bit too large for most children to hold comfortably, but it does have 11 teeth per inch. The blade is fairly stiff and it's a 20 inch saw just like the Sandvik. Before you go out and buy a saw, it's worth looking around and seeing what you have in your neighborhood. I found this saw in the basement of a school where I was teaching for many years. It had been neglected, living in the back corner of a dark closet. And it's turned out to be a gem. The handle is just the right size for little kids in particular. It's about 15 inches long. It has 10 teeth per inch. The blade is a bit more flexible than my other saws, but most students find it really easy to use. So, Check out what's on Craigslist in your town. You might look on eBay. You might ask around and see if anybody has any little saws lying around in their house looking for somebody to use them. Before moving on to using the saw, I wanted to show you three saws that I thought would be great with kids, but aren't. And they really demonstrate how critical it is that we have all four criteria met. This Stanley, I thought would be great it's about 20 inches long, it's 12 teeth per inch, it's a really stiff blade, but the handle is a deal breaker. The handle is just too large for most kids to hold and they just can't handle the saw. So that was a failure. This do-it saw, I thought the same thing. Wow, it's nice and stiff. And the handle is lovely on this saw. It's a perfect size for kids. It's again, 20 inches long, but it's eight teeth per inch. And most of my students don't have the strength to push it through the wood. And here's another. I thought this Sandvik would be great, partly because I love Sandvik saws. And the handle is just right for kids. It's stiff enough, it's 20 inches long, but this one is seven teeth per inch. And again, my students, couldn't push it through the wood easily enough. 
I know I just gave you a lot of information about saws, but it's really important that the child have a tool that they can manage on their own. Now I want to show you the techniques I teach children to use so that they can handle the saw independently. Prior to sawing, I need to mark the wood. In this case, I drew a line with a tri-square and make a sandwich to hold the wood securely in place. You can see I've got the line two fingers off the end of the bench. The C-clamp is centered on the wood. It's as tight as I can make it. And you can notice that the handle is pointing up. That creates a barrier when I'm using a crosscut saw. I can hide one hand here while I hold the saw with the other. Before putting the saw against the wood, the child needs to know where to stand. If they are standing on this side of the bench and they're right-handed, they can put the saw against the line, but there is nowhere to hide the hand. It only works if they're left-handed to stand on this side of the bench. So if the child is finding they have nowhere to hide their hand, it means they need to step to the other side of the bench. Now they can hide their hand and saw safely. Once the child is on the correct side of the bench, they need to position their feet and body properly so they're not twisted up as they try and saw. They want their left foot under the bench if they're right-handed. And of course, if they're left-handed, they'd put their right foot under the bench. So the opposite foot under the bench, and then the other foot, in this case, my right foot, kind of behind the line. So my body is lined up behind that line. Now I can hide my hand and start to saw. I begin right up by the handle and pull backwards three times. That makes a small cut in the wood and keeps the saw from wandering off the line. Starting is often the hardest part for children and I'll do it with them, never for them. And I do that by wrapping my hand around theirs on the handle like this. So my fingers are outside of that hole in the handle, but I can help steady the saw and push just a little bit to make up for the strength and skill that they don't have yet. So you might be holding the saw with a child to help them do this. I'm going to go backwards three times. And now I have a small kerf or cut in the wood and that lines me right up with the line. Now I'm ready to start the sawing in earnest. I want to use the whole blade. And in order to do that, I need to keep the saw straight. So I'm positioning my body behind the saw. So I'm not pulling it and bending it. So I'm right behind the saw. And you can see I'm pushing at a slight angle. I don't want to hold the saw flat like that. A lot of kids want to do that for some reason, but it, it doesn't work at all. So hold it at an angle like this, just a, a nice gentle angle so you can pull easily down. I'm only looking at one place while I saw, and that is right here where the saw meets the line. If I look anywhere else, I'm going to get off my line. So I want to look at where I want the saw to go. So look at that line as I saw, I'm also really working to keep the blade straight. That's why you want a nice stiff blade because they stay straight on their own. If the saw bends like that, it won't go. I can push as hard as I want and it's simply not going to go through the wood. So I need to keep that blade straight, keep my body behind the saw. Young children in particular have a difficult time with this just because of the height problem. And that's where you can help them out a lot, again, by wrapping your hand around theirs. And you're not actually pushing. All you need to do is help to hold the saw straight, and then they can do all the pushing. So now I'm sawing, blowing away the sawdust as it accumulates on the wood. And I'm looking to see if I go off the line. I'll show you what happens if you go off the line. Most students, most kids are going to go off the line. It's how you learn how to do this. So you're so long and you blow away the sawdust, ups, you're off the line. You can steer a crosscut saw by twisting it. Not by bending it, but by twisting the handle. Okay? And that's a very tricky idea and it's a hard skill to learn even for adults. So I'll do this with children. 
I've had a few kids learn to do it on their own, and that's really exciting, but I don't expect kids to learn how to do that very early on in learning to become woodworkers. So I'll go back to where I was on the line, and then I'll turn the saw by twisting it onto the line. And there I'm back on the line. And yes, the saw does like to talk when you're doing that, and it's really annoying. So I'm sawing along, I'm looking at the line, I'm keeping the saw straight, I'm steering if I need to. Many kids will get tired cutting a piece of wood, especially in the beginning. So it's important for them to know where to put the saw. The last thing you want is for the child just to stop, let go of the saw, and walk away because the saw will come flying out of the wood. Okay, and it could hurt somebody, particularly the child who's doing the sawing. So, good places to put the saw are on any surface that is wooden. Something soft that will not damage the sharpness of the blade. So, for example, I could put the saw on the bench. That works great or on a table. I'm not going to put it on the floor in this case because the floor is concrete and it will make that saw dull rapidly. So wherever you put the saw, it needs to be a place that will not make it dull. So let's get back to sawing here. I've got my hand hit, I'm sawing away. What happens when you get to the end of the cut is that the wood wants to break off. It wants to crack as you get to the end. And so learning to be gentle at the end of a cut is a skill that's really important for kids to learn. And it doesn't come easily, especially in the beginning, because they're working so hard just to make the saw work. So I'll sometimes come in at the end and just ease back on the saw for them, kind of work against their push so that we don't overwhelm the last bits of wood and crack it. <laughs> Right here at this part is critical. Okay, I'm no, there's no more line. There's just a little bit of wood holding this together. So I want to be super gentle. I sometimes tell them to like whisper to the wood with the saw. I'm just going to whisper. And you're not going to use the whole blade on this part. Just gently saw it. Keep it super straight. And it should just fall right out. Perfect. There, we're all done. It's really important that they don't reach down to pick up the wood right away, but that they put the saw in a safe location and then pick up whatever wood's lying on the floor. Otherwise, they can swing that saw around and they can hurt somebody, particularly themselves. Give yourself plenty of time to develop mastery with the crosscut saw. You're not going to become a master overnight, but you will become a master very quickly if you practice with it. I recommend making projects using pine because it's a nice soft wood and the saw is easier to use in a softer wood. Also, make projects that don't require a lot of precision so that you can accept imperfection. The child needs to know that they can make mistakes in order to learn. So have fun using this saw with a child until they can use it on their own. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Visit my website, woodworkingwithkids.wordpress.com. There you'll find a photo gallery of projects and of tools and links to my other videos. While you're there, you can send me your comments, ask me questions, make suggestions for future videos. I welcome all of your input. Thanks.